Hello, welcome to Sophie Co Visionaries. Well, they say age breeds wisdom. But can we grow personally and mature while staying young and healthy? Can aging be cured just like any other disease? Well, I ask David St. Clair, professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. David St. Clair, welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Uh, we have lots to talk about. So you suggest that aging may be looked at as a disease that can be treated. What makes you think that age is a medical condition rather than the natural course of things? Well, thanks, Sophie. Uh, well, aging is just like every other condition that causes us to be sick and eventually die. Uh, we like to think it's natural because it happens to most people, but in 100 years ago, cancer, heart disease, frailty, these are things that, that if you lived long enough, you would get. Uh, and eventually, we learned how to treat those things. We understood what the basis was. And we're at the same stage with aging. We now have, a, for the first time, a fundamental understanding of what causes aging, how to slow it down, and even potentially how to, how to treat it and reverse the process. And my argument about why we should focus on it is that aging is the major cause of all of the diseases that we try to stop. And instead of trying to whack them on the head one at a time as they emerge, why don't we try to stop us getting to the edge of the cliff in the first place before we drop off? So if you're right about age being sort of disease, why is today's medicine treating all kinds of diseases that appear in old age and not addressing the old age itself? which may actually be the underlying cause of having a bunch of illnesses when you're 70 plus. Well, it's completely historical. The medical profession has built itself up to treat things that are already occurring. We call these things diseases. But the only difference between a disease and aging is that a disease happens to less than 50% and aging happens to 50% or more. And I think that's just we know that's a completely arbitrary distinction. So it's historical. And in 30 years from now, I'm certain that we'll look back at today and think, why did we ignore this major problem on the planet? And why didn't we work on this sooner? Well, you have, uh, you're experimenting with NAD+. That's a molecule, I guess, and uh, takes care of preserving cells. Correct me if I'm wrong here. And we lose that molecule as we age, right? So. If we take it as a pill, we will stop aging. What's going to happen? I mean, have I gotten this right? Uh, well, it's, we don't know that much yet. What we've been doing as a field is publishing in the world's leading journals about what's driving aging. But we've also discovered that there are genes in our bodies that protect us from aging. We call these longevity genes. And there's a set of genes that we work on in my lab at Harvard called the sirtuins. And for those to work effectively to slow aging and prevent us from getting diseases, they need a molecule called NAD. And you can take supplements that will raise NAD levels in the body, but we only know so far that they work really effectively in animal studies to slow down aging and give uh, the benefits of exercise and diet without actually having to do that. But we're right in the middle of clinical trials. Some are being run at hospitals at Harvard, some around the world. And we're hopeful in the next year or so we'll have some first true evidence, not just that it's safe, which we know already so far, but that it actually helps to do some of those things that we see in those mouse studies. So it's a very exciting time. And there's, there's hundreds of studies around the world looking at molecules in people to see if we can actually slow down the aging process. Hmm. Well, why hasn't this anti-aging drug of yours been adopted and mass produced yet? I mean, um, I know that you're, you know, taking it, your family is taking it. Uh, nevertheless, it's not approved by the FDA yet. Are there dangers to it and that still need to be addressed? Uh, well, just to be clear, I'm, I'm not taking anything that isn't available um, to the general public. These are supplements, um, but supplements have a drawback, which is my, pr primarily we don't know if they work yet. Um, and this is the problem. And so that's why I'm working on these clinical trials that would eventually produce a drug that a doctor could prescribe, knowing that in most people, or at least uh, a number of people, it's proven to work. And initially, it'll be prescribed for treating diseases, because aging is not yet a prescribable condition. Uh, but why hasn't the world adopted this yet? 
Well, because we need to prove that these things work. And right now, because things look very promising, many of us, including my family, have decided to take the risk that uh, if we don't do anything, that's even worse, we think. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a risk. There's still a chance that there could be side effects that we haven't seen yet. So um, uh, how long have you been taking it for, if I may ask? And how old are you? So, so I want to see if it's working. <laughs> uh, right. Well, I'm 103, <laughs> give or take a few. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm, uh, I'm, I just turned, I wish. Uh, so I, I just turned 50. And so you can be the judge. I don't have any gray hair yet, which is a, yeah, a good sign. Yeah, you do look amazing for someone uh, My father is 80 and, and doing very well. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. I look even more amazing considering I grew up in Sydney, Australia, sunbathing uh, and getting really burnt. And I really should be totally wrinkled. So, so far, so good. But that's not proof that this is working. That said, I'm not an athlete. I don't do a lot of exercise. I wish I had time for that. But my physiology, as far as doctors can tell, is like an athlete. So what I can tell so, so far so, so is that my father time, and I are doing well. How long have you been taking this it's for? It's not hurting us. As... Yeah, uh, well, depends. So there's a cocktail of a few things that we've been taking based on my lab's research and some many others uh, around the world. And But the NAD booster molecule I've been taking for a few years now. I want to take you, I, I want you to prescribe me what you're taking because I like the way it's looking. So it has like no side effects so far or it hasn't been looked into or uh, enough time hasn't passed for us to really understand. Well, every molecule we put in our bodies, even food, is, has a risk. You know, there are pesticides in food. So it's on a scale of, of a risk. And uh, we think that these are on, on the, the low end of, of the risk scale because the molecule that I take and my father takes is naturally occurring, our bodies make it, and re really we're just aiming to supplement what we're losing over time and get us back up to a youthful level and the sort of levels that you see in athletes and people who um, don't eat uh, three meals a day, which we think is also very helpful. Uh, well, I mean, a, l a lot of people right now are very big on hormone therapy and they're taking this thing called the growth hormone. I don't know how you're looking at that, but it, 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 does it have like the sort of same effect from what I can tell? Because elder people after, what, like 45 start to take it and they start to look younger, but it does have like uh, bad side effects if you're prone to cancer and all that. But is this, is this like a similar thing to, to, to the growth hormone? Well, it's, it's actually the opposite. Um, what we're talking about is turning on the body's natural defenses against diseases and aging. And this is a long-term effect. So that w we know that if you calorie restrict or have intermittent fasting, um, many studies around the world in people and, and mostly in animals, uh, prevents aging. Um, and so you can either do that or you can take these molecules. Um, but the, the growth hormone does the opposite. It actually speeds up your body's growth at the expense of, we think, at the expense of turning on longevity pathways that we study. So in my view, growth hormone, while it has some great short-term benefits, you will get stronger, you'll have less chance of falling, which is great for the elderly. Um, in the long run, which is what I'm looking at here in my research, um, it's, it's like growth hormone would be like burning the candle at both ends um, instead of putting energy into long-lasting body. Mm -hmm. Well, another road you're actually exploring is this partial cellular reprogramming. And that's when, once again, correct me if I'm wrong, you sort of tell uh, old cells in your body that they're young, they're young cells, and they actually start behaving like young cells. How feasible is this method in anti-aging science? Well, it, it's very new. Uh, it's similar to when uh, the, the Wright brothers discovered how to build a glider, and we're just, they're just strapping on the engines to see how this thing flies. It's, it's only been around for a couple of years now that we've learned that we can reprogram the body to really be young again, not just temporarily, but we think um, a true reset. We found a, a backup hard drive of, of youthfulness in cells, and we use a gene therapy currently, 